So the previous video I made regarding the flexible filaments, I noticed during the intro where I showed the three completed optical illusion vases, the PLA uh, test piece looked quite noisy. It looked like there were random uh, horizontal shadows being cast all the way down the piece. And I'll bring up some close-ups of that now so you can see what I'm talking about. And for the life of me, I couldn't figure out what was causing that because it wasn't something that I'd seen before. So initially I thought, oh, maybe it's something to do with the Z-axis on the 3D printer. So I just made an adjustment on the, um, on, on the coupler, which joins the stepper motor to the uh, threaded rod. And the result was this one. It was even worse. And the photo that I'll put up, you'll see there are now Z-axis artifacts uh, all the way up the print and the the pitch of that is 0.8 of a millimeter which matches perfectly the pitch of the five millimeter threaded rod so this is the fun I had in trying to fix that starting at the base of the z-axis we have the stepper motors one thing to check with any stepper motor on your 3D printer is to ensure that the shaft is dead straight. You don't want a bent shaft on your stepper motor. I've been caught out with this before and it seems I've been caught out again. One of the uh, stepper motors on my Z-axis had a very minor uh, wobble to it. Um, and that has caused me grief in the past and it seems I've been caught out again. So. I've had to replace one of the stepper motors on my 3D printer. I'm not sure how long that's been like that for. It might have been like that for a while and I may have fluked uh, the coupler to mitigate a, a majority of that wobble, but certainly replacing that, um, that stepper motor with a dead straight shafted stepper motor has improved the print quality. The stepper motor then attaches to the Z-axis motor bracket. The original Z-axis motor bracket was this guy. Uh, this was uh, or is a 3D printed part from one of the earlier uh, Replicio kits. Um, I believe Replicio don't um, print their parts anymore. They have plastic injected molded parts, but uh, I'm one of the early adopters. And this is one of the things that I've noticed with, uh, with this bracket because it's printed you know, quite poorly at quite a, a, a low resolution. I'm assuming 0.35 or something because um, you can clearly see the layers and there's even gaps between some of these layers. I noticed that when the Z-axis was rotating, so either lifting or dropping the whole X carriage, the whole motor assembly was ever so slightly moving up or down based on, uh, I guess, the position of the, uh, of the rod. Now, that's obviously going to change as well um, the, the level of the print. As it's, as it's you know, laying down the next layer of plastic, if the motor's pushed down a bit, it's going to squish out that layer more than if the motor was pushed up. The, the, that layer would be a lot thinner. So, highly recommend if you have one of the original Replicio kits with a 3D printed part, if you too are having an issue where you, you see the motor slightly um, uh, wobble up and down as, it, as it's moving, go ahead and print yourself one of these guys. This is uh, just a motor mount uh, for the Z-axis that I found on Thingiverse. Uh, it attaches to the motor uh, at all four screw holes as opposed to the original one which attaches just to the, to the three. And this one here is rock solid. I have not had an issue with, uh, with any um, bending at all while the motor spins. Um, you, you might not have an issue with yours because I'm, I'm assuming this design is perfectly fine. It could simply be that the, uh, the, this particular part is, is just poorly printed. And I'm sure if I uh, put enough pressure on this, I'll be able to snap it. Let's give it a go. Oh man, that is terrible. Next up, we have the shaft coupler. Uh, the job of the shaft coupler is to attach the shaft of the stepper motor to the M5 threaded rod. 
Uh, these shaft couplers have a spring in the center of them, which allows uh, any offset between the shafts to be absorbed within the springiness of the coupler. Uh, the original coupler that came, or couplers, that came with this printer um, was this one here. It's been, it's been working fine, but um, one thing that I never really liked about this particular style of coupler is the way that it attaches to the shafts. There's a grub screw up and down here, and there's another grub screw uh, up and down here. So we have a grub screw there and a grub screw there. Uh, that, that's fine when attaching to the shaft of the stepper motor because that's exactly five millimeter and there's a flat, so that fits perfectly uh, into the coupler. And by having, uh, I guess, one side clamped, uh, it isn't going to be off-center, but when the M5 threaded rod fits into the top of this shaft coupler, the M5 threaded rod isn't 5 millimeters. I've seen them vary between 4.6 to 4.9 millimeters in diameter. So what happens there is when the shaft uh, enters into the coupler and you start screwing, say, the grub screw on this side to lock it in, because it's it's not already touching uh, the perimeter of the, of the shaft, it's pushing that entire uh, rod off to one side. And the same with this scrub screw, you're kind of pushing the shaft over to that side. So we kind of have uh, an off-centered shaft. What I like about this particular um, uh, coupler that I've changed to is this design incorporates not only uh, one, only one grub screw instead of two, but it incorporates this clamping mechanism where uh, the actual whole coupler is kind of cut down one side. Uh, you screw in a, uh, a, a screw on the top and the bottom, which clamps uh, or reduces the actual diameter of the, of the coupler uh, to fit uh, whatever shaft that you're coupling to. So with this particular M5 threaded rod being 4.9 millimeters, I'm, I'm able to uh, screw down the, the top part of the shaft down to 4.9 millimeters and then finally lock it in with the grub screw, and that is now dead centered. When attaching uh, the coupler to the two shafts, one thing to note is, do you butt up the shafts together within the coupler, or do you leave a gap between the shafts? I've found with uh, all my test printing, leaving a gap between the shafts so that they don't touch in the center of this coupler, produces uh, better prints than if than if they are butted up against each other. So if I push down now on the threaded rod, you'll see it does uh, spring back and forth. So um, if if yours are touching and, and you're seeing Z-axis artifacts, just try lifting up the uh, the M5 rod, just, a, just two or three millimeters, reattach it and see if the quality of your prints change. Next we have the M5 threaded rod itself. Uh, one thing to check, and I did check both of mine, is to make sure that they are dead straight. Uh, a couple of ways to check them is, first of all, just to stare down the threaded rod, uh, and also to roll them on the table. That will also give an indication um, that the rod is straight. If your rod is bent, uh, at all, it'll definitely show while rolling it on the table, so highly recommend replacing the rod if it's not dead straight. When engaging the Z-axis, ensure it isn't off-center or wobbling while it's turning. Thanks for watching. If you have any other ideas or tricks for fixing Z-axis artifacts and Z-axis banding, please leave your comments below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and I'll catch you next time.